Hello, Hornbook TV. Once again, I'm Roger Sutton, Editor-in-Chief of the Hornbook, and I'm here with Oge Mora, who is here to talk with me about her book, Thank You, Amu, her first book, Local Girl. She's from Providence. She lives <laughs> in Providence. We're glad she came up for the day. You were here for an SLJ event yes. that was being held at Simmons, yes. and she graciously stopped by. And this book, Thank You, Amu, is about Amu, who is making stew. And the stew smells so good that the whole neighborhood ends up wanting a taste of it. So what I want to know is, what was in that stew? <laughs> well, yeah, so um, what I think, I think when you, you hear thick red stew, because that's how I refer to it in the book, most people are like, what's the stew? Well, I'm referring to like, um, there's a Nigerian dish called, we call it just stew, but it always has a tomato base, hence mm -hmm. the red color. And there are a variety of different ways that you can make it. So like you can make stew very quickly, but traditionally um, it's cooked over a long period of time. Like that's how you get the most flavor and things like that. And so um, you get tomatoes, you could have chicken or goat meat or like a ton of different meats that you could have in there. You might even have a little bit of vegetable in there and things like that. And then you serve it with rice. What um, kind of spices would you use so that, it, I mean, obviously it's not Italian tomato sauce. <laughs> so a Nigerian tomato sauce, what's the spicing that identifies it? Do you know? Um, well, I mean, I think the biggest difference if you're thinking of like a like a tomato sauce or like a pasta sauce, like on the Italian side or in comparison to what stew is more, more so doing is like the flavor profile is more like, as like more on like that umami kind of like, um, like, like Japanese food, a lot of Nigerian food uh, deals more with like the umami flavor profile. So it's like stuff that's been cooked over time for a long mm -hmm. period of times, using the bones, using like, um, like the juices of the meats and things like that. And then two studs tends to be spicy, lots of spicy Nigerian food. Like peppers. <laughs> yeah, so um, so you could just have like um, just like pepper that you would like put in there, or you could put like um, habanero peppers and stuff to get that heat in there as well. And so yeah, I think that's actually the biggest difference is just how it tastes. Um, it was it was actually kind of funny. I, I had tried to make some spaghetti sauce and it was like I was making stew but I was, I was changing <laughs> I was changing a couple things it was still very good but um yeah so that's I think that's the biggest difference that it's a lot spicier it's got a deeper kind of flavor to it so it's not as light as you would usually think of like spaghetti sauce to be and um I think and your family is from Nigeria yeah and so both so my parents are Nigerian yeah they both were born in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You were born here. I was born here. So um, they came to the States for college and decided to stay here. And mm -hmm. then they had me and all my siblings. And so it was funny, even when, um, so, uh, yeah, so that's why we have our stew. And I do think, you still cook it yourself? Oh, yeah. I love cooking stew. I mean, I definitely don't have the time to <laughs> do the, um, uh, cook stew in the way that my mother loves to cook stew because like that will take hours and hours on end But you can still make a quick stew. That's still very enjoyable and delicious. So I love making stew Are you or sometimes give us a recipe to go along with our talks with Roger that we send out to 28,000 people? So I've Come gotten... on, you can have a whole new second career <laughs> So I've gotten that question a lot. So um, when I was like first making this book people are always like why, why don't you put like the stew recipe like in there? So like um, my first reason why I didn't put the stew recipe in there was that um, I wanted to make sure that people got that the heart of the book was centering on giving and gratitude and it really wasn't about the stew as stew. And the second thing to be really quite honest with you is we don't have a recipe. <laughs> so like it, like the way I learned how to make stew was like like two scoops of this and stuff like that. I just like saw my mom make it a bunch of times. So when I left, I was like, oh, I guess I'm making the stew today. And I just made it. <laughs> Whatever's on hand. Yeah, so I like, and then I just would put it together. 
Um, and then I think something that I found kind of exciting about when like, I sh I've shared this book with people is how like when like the stews were moved, how people will insert things that like they know. Like one of my really good friends, she was telling me how this kind of reminded her of like uh, a Polish dish that her mother would always make and things like that. And then one of my friends had talked about a Korean stew that goes through a very similar process and has that same kind of comforting food quality for her mm -hmm. and so like I'm always really excited about like what foods or um, what foods um, people connect to in the same way I connect to stew that my mm -hmm. grandmother or my mother would make that's that way so right I think so that's each reader kinda... can say here's what I imagine to be in this yeah story. like they can see themselves in the story in that way and and, and think about what food um, has that sort of um, they have that relationship with well now I'm hungry so let's go have lunch <laughs> thank you thank you thanks Cindy